and welcome to another Unity 5 tutorial. This tutorial was created for uh, Kiki. Um, I apologise if I've pronounced your name wrong, um, but that's the Australian way of saying it. It's K-I-K-E, -E, um, who contacted me on um, Holistic 3D's Facebook page early this morning and asked me how to get the camera uh, following around your player in a networked game. So in the previous tutorial, which was the first one that I've posted on the basics of Unity networking, I showed you how to create a simple um, client and server application with a couple of cars in it. So it looks like this. If we start up our host here, the host is also a client and this is our player character. So when other people connect, they become uh, a little orange car as well. And you can put your name over the top here. Now, in this current version, the um, camera doesn't follow you around, as you can see. So the question is, how do we attach the camera to the player that belongs to you? not the other players because they're all using exactly the same prefab and there's a lot of code that's uh, replicated all over the place. And I know this all gets kind of confusing when you're trying to think about, you know, which prefab is your prefab and which prefab belongs to all of the other people that are connected um, can get a little bit um, messy. But I'll just show you how to very quickly attach the camera to this um, player object. Now the code doing all the work in this is the setup local player script. Uh, if we open that up, now this hasn't changed from before, uh, from the previous tutorial, except um, in the start function, what we're going to add are some directives for the main camera. So you'll see if you have a look in your previous code is that we've got if is local player, and then there's this get component drive.enabled, which enables you to drive the local player. So this local player, if this is true, then any code in here is only going to act on your uh, car, on your player character, not all of the other ones that are connected. Whereas a lot of the other code will run on the others that are connected um, because of the way the system works. So um, what I'm doing here is after I enable the driving for the car is I'm getting the camera, the main camera, in the scene and I'm modifying its position to be at the position of your um, player character minus the forward vector. So in the forward direction we're actually going behind the car um, by 10 units. So this will put the uh, camera behind the car. And then I'm also going to add on just a little bit of height. So above the car. And this will put the camera behind and up a little bit. And then we're going to set look at on the camera. So to look at the transform of the car. And finally, to get the camera to follow the player everywhere, we make the camera's... Uh, transform a child of the car so the parent of the camera's transform is set to the car prefab which is done like that now these three lines are going to grab hold of the main camera how does unity know what the main camera is okay so you should only have one camera in your scene the way that Unity knows which is the main camera is if it is tagged as the main camera. Let me just save this and I'll show you. Okay, save it, switch back to here. Let's go to this main camera. If for some reason you've deleted your main camera, that's the default one that comes in with your projects, and you've made another camera, you need to make sure that it's tagged as main camera. So see that there? By default the main camera will be tagged that but if you happen as I said to delete your camera create a new one you'll need to set this back here so that that code can then find the camera. All right? let's run this and see what happens. Okay so as soon as I click on this and that uh, setup local player runs you can now see that our car appears and the camera is set behind and slightly above that car. So it's just going to follow that player everywhere. 
if you want to set the player up a little higher, so the camera, uh, we can multiply the up vector here, say by five. Save that and run and start a game. And now we're up a bit higher following that car around. Okay, now just to test that this is going to work with a, another client, I'll just run another one. Okay, so I just, I just built out and ran the um, current game um, to the desktop so I could just run it. And I'm going to connect uh, as a client. So here's my uh, new car. And I'll just change the name on this one. And we can drive that around. Oh, if I click in the window. And there's the other player. Now the nice thing about this is you'll remember that we created a billboard for the names above the players in the last tutorial. And you can see that for whichever camera you're looking through. So if you're this player here and you're looking through this camera, the names are facing this camera. And if you're in here, they're facing this camera because there is only one camera in the scene. So um, it's got no choice but to face the camera. All right, so that is attaching the camera to your player. I'll just shut this down now. And I'm gonna show you one more thing before the end of this tutorial. So um, back in the day when uh, there was Unity version 3, they used to have a networked example with two um, four-wheel drives in it that looked kind of like warthogs from Halo. And they had a really nice piece of script that made the camera smooth follow the player um, with a kind of a spring system on it. So I've done a little bit of digging back through my old projects and found that code for you because you can't get that project anymore. And what I'm going to do is replace the camera following code with this uh, new script. So uh, first of all, um, the script needs to be attached to the main camera, which it already is. You can see it here. And I'll just go through this smooth camera follow script. So create a C sharp file called smooth camera follow. And let's have a look inside here. It's quite long and involved. But basically it is taking the target that you give it, which is going to be your player character. And then you can set a distance and a height and um, an amount of lag and the maximum speed and the snap lag of when you're going to stop um, lagging behind and actually snap to the player, which, which means the camera's caught up with you. It's, it's like having the camera follow you around on the end of a rubber band, basically, this code. So I, I'm not going to explain all of it, but I'll just scroll through it slowly so you can type it in yourself. Um, but basically, it's, it's doing what we just did with those few lines of code, except it's a little bit more dynamic. Uh, and it, it just feels a little bit more natural when you use it, as I'll show you in a moment. But these are the important settings here, is just um, determining what distance you want your camera to be, how high above the object, and how much sort of lag and um, springiness is going to be in it. All right, so the first function inside of here is an apply, which is applying the camera's movement. Um, it's also got some code in here left over from uh, being able to snap when you hit the fire two key um, button. I guess you can use that if you want to snap the camera to your player. I haven't applied it. This is the exact code that they used to have in the old project, but what I did was to change it from JavaScript into C Sharp. Uh, so I haven't actually modified any of the functionality. So that's the apply. Then there's an late update, which runs that apply for you. Okay, and then there's an applying uh, snapping if you get within a certain distance or obviously if you've hit the fire two button, it's going to snap the camera to your player. Okay, moving down, we've got vector three adjust line of sight. 
And what it does is um, also allows the camera to keep the player within its sights, within the um, world view, um, so that you you don't actually lose a player or get too close or, or run out of space on the screen for the player to be in front of the camera, which is quite nice. Uh, now the next function is apply position dampening. And this is just uh, catching up to it, but slowing down at the same time. And then there's a setup rotation function, which is just going to fit on the screen there for you. And this keeps the camera following your player, but behind the player in a nice smooth sort of way so that the camera doesn't stay rigidly attached to your player. If the player turns the corner, then the camera is going to swing around and follow. Okay, and then there's a few um, extra functions at the bottom that just do a few extra calculations for you. Um, and then this extra bracket here, that's the bracket for the class. So you know you're at the end. All right, so that is the smooth camera follow script. I'll just shut that down. Now that is attached to the main camera. To get it to run, we replace the lines in setup local player. The ones that we made with the camera before that gives you sort of the rigid attached camera. And let's just delete those. And the line we're gonna use is this one here. So I'm gonna put this up here. And smooth camera follow dot target. So this is the name of the script that's attached to your camera um, dot target, and then this dot transform, which will um, make your player character the target of what the camera is going to follow. Now the reason we can use this nice little short piece of code here instead of going main camera dot get component blah 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 is because this target has been made a static so when you make something a static variable in a script you can access it by giving the script name and the um, name of the variable and if we just go quickly back into that smooth camera follow I will just show you that that is the case at the top here this target is indeed static so we only need the name of the class and the name of the variable to access it which makes life so much easier than all the get components but you know sometimes you can't use a static variable right so that's saved let's go back to here just check that the main camera does have that attached and you'll see that in the inspector we can modify the distance the height and the lag and all those sorts of things um, to your heart's content I'm just going to leave them like the default settings because that works quite well and I'll press play and I'll host a game. See how the camera moved in? Now if I turn my car around and then I take off, the camera flows after it. So the car turns the corner and goes straight and then the camera just follows it. And if I stop the car, the camera just catches up to it. Now you can modify those values. So um, let's just change this to maybe a distance of eight height of 2, um, let's change the smooth lag to 0.5, um, change the speed. If you put that down, then you're going to follow a bit slower, which will take longer to catch up. Okay, we're now further away. The player will go off much faster um, because of the speed of the camera. It's not going as fast, and then it will eventually catch up when we turn it off. And as far as I'm concerned, this is a much nicer solution to attaching your camera to your player in any game, whether it's networked or not. Uh, okay, so it doesn't matter which one you use. Um, the smooth camera follow, I'll just say it again, that's thanks to um, Unity that put it out with Unity 3. All I've done is update it into C Sharp. Um, so I won't take any credit for that. Um, and they've done a brilliant job and it works fine in Unity 5. So I hope that's given you some pointers for the camera. Um, and hopefully in the next tutorial when I come back on networking, we'll be looking at changing the prefabs of the player characters. Uh, and I'll see you next time. Oh, my mom.